This is my song about the hobby of ham. I've taken up your time with my freaky jam. If you hear my CQ, you can give me a call if you choose. We can talk about the weather or the bottom of the cycle blues. In rush, or what is that thud? This is Jim Heath, W6LG, your YouTube Elmer, with music by Ryle Me Don, AE3RM, two time Grammy nominee. Hi, I'm Jim, W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Turned on one of my amplifiers and blew a breaker in the main panel. And so I reset the breaker and it killed all the stuff in here because um, it's all tagged to the same line that goes out to the main panel. And next day, same thing happened. Next day it didn't happen. And so it was sort of intermittent and I didn't quite understand what was going on. In doing some research on what might be happening, um, it appears that it was inrush current. Now, I think that's a misnomer or a bad name because it makes it sound like the current rushes in faster than it would normally. I don't know that that's the case. Uh, they talk about slowing the current. Um, it may be that it just was way too much current. So I got a, um, I bought off of Amazon a clamp meter that you can put around an AC cord or part of it, and it'll read the peak current when you turn on something. So it measures that peak current and registers it on the display. How accurate that device is, I, I don't know. But the amp draws maybe 12 amps when it's running full power. Idling, it's probably two or three amps. <clears throat> the un inrush current meter at turn on measures 40. I kept turning it on and off and then 70. So 70 amps at one of the times when it was turned on. And I believe the reason for that is if you look at the, the cycle of uh, the 60 cycle, I may have turned it on right at that peak voltage and therefore the peak amount of current flowed into the amplifier. Well, where does it go? And why does it want to do that? Well, there's a couple things. One, and I'll show you a picture of, a, of the transformer uh, like the one I'm using in the amplifier. It's an Ameritron um, MFJ transformer that's hypersil wound, has a very efficient primary, probably fairly low resistance because its regulation is really good. The transformer weighs about 30 to 35 pounds. So that transformer has to get charged up and that's part of the thump that you hear when I turn it on. Beyond that, so there's the transformer, there's no choke, a lot of, not a lot, some power supplies would have a choke following um, the rectifiers. In this case, it is the transformer, rectifiers, and then to the capacitors. The capacitors are big and I'll show you um, what they look like. I've got some electrolytics here in a bag. Um, I'm using oil, let's see, in that amplifier I'm using electrolytics that look a little bit like this. Um, that's at 470 microfarads. So 10 of these is uh, 4,000 volts at 47 microfarads and I've got a resistor across uh, each one of those. So 100 K ohm um, 5 watt resistor. The purpose of the resistor is it acts like a bleeder so when you turn off the power supply it bleeds the voltage off, dissipates it in heat. Also it equalizes the voltage across each of these capacitors. So let's say you had um, a capacitor with a different resistance than a, a different resistance than another one. Let's just suppose that the uh, bleeder resistor had a different value. It might put a lot of voltage on one and not so much on another, causing one of them to fail. Uh, you get one of these that fails, you may have the whole string fail as a result. 
in one of the amps I have, there's a choke, and the ch a choke is wound kind of like a transformer. Uh, so it's got a core and, and a winding. So as the voltage comes out of the transformer, goes through the rectifiers, and through this choke into the capacitors, and it's called choke input. So it's transformer, um, and then the rectifiers, choke, and capacitors. The device I use to turn on uh, that particular amplifier is one of these, and this is um, a uh, it's a combination breaker and on and off switch from Heinemann. Uh, this one's 18.75 amps, and it will handle um, three or four or five cycles at a, a rating uh, at a current that's greater than the 18.75. Uh, well, that's the peak. It trips at 18.75. It can handle 15 amps, so I misread that. So uh, I have these up to 60 amps. I was When I would see these at a surplus sale or um, a garage sale, I, I'd buy them uh, because they make good turn-on switches. They're, they're beefy. Uh, they trip very quickly. This device in the amplifier did not trip, but the breaker tripped, and the breaker may have become defective because it, it tripped so often. Breakers aren't really meant to be tripped a lot, and in some theories, a couple, three or four times, and you need to replace that breaker. What does it sound like, and what does it look like? So I've drawn an animation, and I'll play that now, and you can see what happens as the current peaks, and, and each subsequent cycle of that 60 cycle, the current becomes less and less and less and less, to finally runs down to a point where it's not charging the, the capacitors, it's really powering the device. So, again, current goes in to get the transformer going and to charge the capacitors. Um, and that can be a huge amount of current. So let me let me show you this video, uh, this animation I drew in Photoshop, and again, it's a series of, of cells I put together. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, so there's a huge amount of current in the beginning and it tapers down to a relatively small amount. Why is that a problem or why do we care? Well, part of it has to do with, uh, is it stressing the wiring in the walls? Is it stressing the amplifier? Is it um, ruining the breaker? Uh, is it causing damage to the bus bar in the breaker panel when it's drawing so much current? My advice would be if you're going to have an electrician out to put in a 240 volt outlet to run an amplifier. And if you look at the instruction book for the amplifier and it says 10 amps, 15 amps, whatever the number is, go quite a bit higher than that. You may want to go to a 50 amp. The good news is, is that many amplifiers uh, like the ones from Ameritron have a resistor that's in the system for just a split second. And, it, and as you can see from the graphic, it only needs to be there for a fraction of a second to handle that inrush current. And um, here's one device I've got that I'm wiring up now. This is um, a couple of relays and a couple of resistors. And it, um, let's see if I can get it to focus. It uh, puts those two resistors in the line instantaneously and then the relays close and short out the resistor. So this handles the inrush current ever so briefly and that's that's all it needs to happen. Why is that a problem? I'll go back to uh, damaging equipment. Um, the Drake L4B that I have has front panel switches and had the original one had no step start. So when you hit that rocker switch on the front, all the current was going through that switch. The problem is 
the switch would fail over time. A bigger problem is they don't make them anymore. So as I was buying and selling uh, Drake L4Bs, I'm going to sell the one I have. Uh, I bought extra switches, extra panel meters, and other things. Uh, another thing that the, the Drake did not have was um, any kind of protection for the meters. So I've put that in too. So again, inrush current can damage switches, um, electrical panels, uh, breakers, any number of things. And it just isn't a good idea. If you have any questions about inrush current, uh, let me know. I think maybe the word rush is a, is um, maybe a mistake, and I don't know of a better word. If you think of something that describes it better than in rush, let me know. If you have not subscribed, I really would like you to do that. I'm, uh, once I get to 50,000 subscribers, um, I get some extra benefits from YouTube, so that would be that would be good. For now, 73, I'm Jim W6LG. What is that thump?